So, welcome all. We are trying to learn something about uh, distributed deadlocks. Till now, we have seen that uh, there are transaction which uh, execute on distributed environment, two phase commit is there and then we have seen that con for concurrency control, we try to use locking and time stamping ordering kind of thing. We can also use optimistic concurrency control. And now, since we use uh, uh, locking, right? so some data can be locked and uh, it may not be available for use for, uh, for other transactions. right? So, if such thing happens, in that case, what will happen? Some transaction will be waiting for uh, other transaction to complete. And if there is a cycle in between, some transaction can, uh, some deadlock can occur. Now, this is a thing that we have seen on a um, server, right? Single server. Now, we are thinking the same thing in a distributed environment. So, let us start. Where uh, deadlocks can arise within a single server. Uh, when uh, locking is used for concurrency control, right? Now, uh, the thing is here we have different servers. Well, so, for each server, these servers must either uh, prevent or detect the deadlocks, right? And after this, uh, they will have to resolve the deadlocks. So, definitely we all will try to prevent and detect. So, basically uh, these are the things we will do and we will try to prevent and uh, detect. So, using uh, timeouts for resolving what we can do? For resolving we can use either timeouts or uh, okay, and uh, um, deadlock detections. Okay. So, what we are saying not for resolving, okay, for uh, finding out that this yes, deadlock has occurred, there are two ways, uh, one can be uh, timeouts, we will assign some timeouts and uh, we will have certain algorithms to detect the that deadlock has occurred. Okay. The thing is the transactions are uh, waiting for um, other transactions, right. So, Either we can assign a, a timeout that it will wait for a time t and after that uh, it will abort. Okay? Or we will have a deadlock detection algorithm that uh, yes, we will draw a wait for graph and we will see that uh, if uh, certain kind of cycle is there in the wait for graph, then um, we will find out that yes, uh, there is a deadlock. So, if we will find that yes, there is certain deadlock, in that case we will have to abort to any one of the transaction in the cycle. So, now in this case of uh, distributed deadlocks, basically you will have two kinds of wait for graphs. One will be local and one will be global, right. So, local means uh, for each server, right. For each server, you will have uh, a local wait for graph where uh, the servers will have their own objects and uh, these objects are being accessed by some transactions. So, which transaction is accessing which object, this kind of uh, information can be retrieved with uh, the local uh, wait for graph. However, there will be a global wait for graph which will keep track of the particular transactions uh, of which are accessing the data objects on all the local wait for graph. So, these local wait for graphs ca uh, can be combined together to form a global uh, wait for graph. And, uh, so, it will help us in understanding uh, whether uh, a deadlock has occurred. So, one thing that you can see here is there is a local and a global wait for graph. In the local wait for graph, you will be able to find only those um, deadlocks if at all they have occurred locally. In distributed environment, we are thinking about the transactions are uh, executing on multiple servers, right? So, these transactions which are involving multiple data objects on uh, different uh, uh, servers, uh, there may be a possibility that uh, certain uh, um, uh, transaction is uh, trying to access certain data objects on different uh, uh, this thing um, server. So, in that case what can happen, uh, you will see we have examples also, but uh, let me show here that T 1 is waiting for um, uh, 
certain data object suppose A on X and uh, this particular transaction T2 uh, is uh, waiting for uh, our data object Y mm, on uh, sorry on Y a data object B suppose. Uh. Now the thing is B is already with B is already with uh, T Anna. So, and A is already with T2, right. So, in that case you can see although this uh, deadlock is not local, but involving two servers. So, it is becoming a distributed deadlock. So, some examples are also there. Let us see. Uh, let us see this example here. What happens? There is uh, U, V, and W, uh, these three transactions. It is C. So, U, V, and W. Now, you see it is taking a lock on D. Uh, after that, it is taking a lock on B. It is uh, now taking a lock on A, and then it is taking a lock on C. Okay, performing some operation also, no problem. Now, it wants a lock on B it wants a lock on C and it wants a lock on A. So, for this if you will draw a, 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 this thing graph, then you will see that they are involving uh, for the data objects which are at different servers, right. See here B is actually at Y, Hannah. so uh, U is waiting for B at Y, B is waiting for C at Z, W is waiting for A at X. So, here in this example you see what is happening, A is waiting for A at X, U is waiting for Y at oh sorry B at Y and similarly uh, V is waiting, uh, this B is held by V. So, now, B is waiting for um, C at Z, which this C has been held by uh, W. So, although D is also held by U, so, but it is not creating any problem. However, this is creating a cycle, which can be represented here that W is waiting for U, U is waiting for V and V is waiting for uh, W. So, it is creating a cycle. So, in case when it is uh, a cycle, now what we can do? So, if there is a cycle, we will have uh, a deadlock. Now, this is the case when we have uh, tried to find out the distributed uh, deadlock. How? Having a uh, total uh, knowledge of all the transactions going on. How is this possible? This is possible if uh, uh, we have a detection mechanism which is centralized, right? So, if it is uh, a centralized deadlock detection method, then it can be uh, done. However, this is not a good idea, right? Why? Because it depends on a single server, right? So, the environment is distributed and we have kept something on a centralized server, then it will have the same problems which was there with the centralized server like um, you know, poor availability, lack of fault tolerance and uh, scalability, those kind of things, right? But now, it is it has to be uh, decentralized means uh, there should be a mechanism where uh, the servers which are which uh, are separate, they will have their local graphs, local uh, wait for graphs and uh, they can uh, um, themselves find out whether there is a uh, problem or not. Okay. So, definitely for that they will need to pass message, right. So, basically in distributed system everything that we have done till date, we have learned that um, everything will be done through message passing. So, here also in distributed deadlock detection what we are going to do, if at all we have some mechanism to uh, find out the deadlocks by sharing some information between the um, servers. Okay. So, that will be a way to find out uh, the information. What can happen? These servers can uh, 
share their weight for graphs, local weight for graphs with each other and then find out the uh, global weight for graph uh, with all of them. However, you can understand this message passing may take much time and also in between this message passing uh, if uh, uh, certain transaction was ha acquiring or having a lock on a particular uh, data object and is released what will happen. Uh, what I am saying is suppose uh, uh, this transaction u is uh, waiting for this and it is it has held something uh, a right. So, if this u aborts you know, or commits in that case it will um, mm, release this a and in between when the communication was going on between the servers and in between this uh, um, u releases a in that case there was no uh, deadlock however messages were passed and later on they decided that yes there was a deadlock okay so in that case it will be called a phantom deadlock where actually the deadlock is not there but we have uh, decided that yes there is a deadlock and a false positive okay so suppose here this is an example where we have uh, certain um, uh, local weight for graph that t is waiting for u and v is waiting for t and um, according to the book uh, what it says suppose what happens uh, at the same time t um, t and u are there right now u is uh, uh, trying to access something from v right something from data object which was held by uh, v so u is waiting for v now at the same time t releases uh, something or, or something uh, u releases something okay u releases something and now t is not waiting for u okay so something may happen so if something happen now what the thing is uh, somehow suppose uh, uh, there was u was waiting for v so if something happens like this uh, the t had an information that something v was having information like uh, t is waiting for u and now u says that u is waiting for v and v already know it, it is waiting for t then v will decide that yes there is a uh, deadlock however it was unaware that uh, uh, in between what happened uh, t is now not waiting for u right this is just an example of three boxes so it is uh, something like that but in uh, environment there can be multiple parties involved right so if uh, while communication you know, uh, if some of them has aborted or committed there will be then some resources will be uh, released and there will be no more deadlock however some of the nodes may detect that there is a deadlock so that will be called as uh, phantom deadlocks okay so we can understand one thing that as i said you know, whether it will uh, this transaction whether it will commit or um, abort but uh, we can understand that what happens um, it cannot uh, uh, release if, if we are aware of uh, two phase locking protocol what happens when it when it starts to release uh, the resources then it uh, does not uh, acquire new resources. You know? So, it can release resources only on commit or abort right, but it cannot commit since it is waiting for something if it will get that resource then only it will perform its all operations and commit. So, it will not commit. So, the only option for this phantom deadlocks will be in case if some transaction aborts due to any reason right. So, this is something that we have to understand about phantom deadlocks. So, other thing is uh, that okay, in this distributed uh, uh, approach, we will use a technique which will be called uh, age chasing or also it is called path pushing. So, basically what happens you see the global weight for graph is not constructed. Uh, 
what is done each of the servers involved has knowledge about some of its edges some of its edges okay the server attempts to find cycles by forwarding messages called probes okay remember this is called probes so one message which will be sent from one server to another it will be called as probes there are three steps of this each chasing what will happen initiation phase in this initiation phase what will happen uh, actually suppose uh, there is a transaction uh, i should say t so if this transaction t is a starting right and uh, now it is waiting for some transaction u right waiting for certain object which has been held by u in that case uh, what it will do it will send a message to u this message will be called as probe right so it will uh, send a probe to u in this message it will send what it will send that t is waiting for u so what this u will now do you will now find out whether it is waiting for something or not hai na so this you uh, is waiting for something if at all something then it will send a probe to the uh, next level it will attach t is waiting to u and u is waiting for v and it will send this message to v and so on this message will be transmitted uh, to others we, we have example you will see here and then what will happen uh, there will be a phase of uh, detection actually what happened uh, initiation was this phase where it sent the message to you after that it will uh, find out whether there is a deadlock or not uh, it will send this message to the other level and then find whether there is a deadlock or not uh, if at all uh, uh, at certain time we have at t we get a uh, information that t is waiting for u and certain like this and the last one is waiting for t in that case t will realize that there is a uh, deadlock and uh, they will have to resolve this deadlock what is the resol resolving i mean uh, the only thing that we can resolve is one of the transaction will have to abort which one uh, it will it may depend on certain uh, priority or something like this but Uh, after this they will have to resolve this is an example what happens suppose uh, in this uh, diagram uh, this transaction w is waiting for uh, u right hai na w is waiting for a which has been held by u so there is a message which is being transmitted by x to y like and w is waiting for u ha huh? now here at y they understand what is happening okay so w is waiting for you you have um, held uh, uh, something at b uh, something which is b at y so whether b is being held by something else or not yes it has been held by b so it will send a message uh, to other b has held c so uh, c is at z so it is sending a message w v w u v to uh, this z now z sees that uh, there is a c which has been held by v and also c uh, sorry c for which v is waiting and c has been held by w so it makes uh, this message this probe w u v w and it sends to w so w gets a information that uh, uh, there is a cycle and in this case then they will have to find out some of the transaction will have to abort right so now the question is which transaction should be aborted right so these transactions uh, will have uh, certain uh, priorities hmm. transaction will have certain uh, priorities and here you can see suppose in initiation state what happened uh, this is a certain scenario where uh, this v is waiting for t and u is waiting for w and at the same time roughly 
at the same time what happens w starts waiting for v and t starts waiting for u initiation state right so what will happen they all will start um, doing these things uh, um, sending messages to each other sending probes to each other and they will realize that there is a uh, problem and uh, two places they will realize where at w and at uh, t right so they are realizing there is a problem now what what can they do so they will find out uh, priority suppose in this example uh, the, <coughs> the priority is like t is uh, priority with uh, u u has more priority with v and uh, v has more priority than w so in that case what will happen w will have to um, abort and uh, the least priority so this is how uh, these things uh, uh, deadlock uh, um, easy chasing and these kind of things will work now suppose uh, you have certain like uh, um, these things priorities have been assigned so you can use this priority for one more thing one more thing means uh why not uh, why all of these uh, uh, transactions are sending probes means uh, initiating these things if they are waiting they are sending message uh, it it is equally likely we understand that um, transaction having higher or lower priority both ca both uh, can uh, start waiting for some uh, other transaction right but uh, still here uh, since we have uh, the priorities so what we can do is those transactions which have uh, higher priority huh, and they are waiting for um, something suppose uh, there is t has higher priority than u so in that case uh, t will send this probe to u however if uh, certain uh, thing like uh, w was having lower priority than v then w will not send a message to v okay so in that case what will happen uh the messages will be transferred um, downhill okay so so in this case uh, these are the way how these will be uh, done however definitely suppose transaction u v w are executed in an order in which uh, uh, u is waiting for v and uh, suppose v is waiting for w and uh, when w starts waiting for u this v will be waiting for w right so without priority rules uh, uh, detection is uh, initiated when w starts waiting um, uh, by sending the probe w is waiting for you right but uh, under the priority rule what will happen this probe will not be sent because w has less priority you know and uh, this deadlock will not be detected so since this is a rule we have to study but still Uh, there is some pitfall for a deadlock right so still the research is there and we are trying to improve it but the thing is the objective is that uh, whenever the servers are there their transactions are there which are involving multiple servers so um, we don't want to centralize this uh, deadlock detection and do we want these servers to participate uh, with each other and find whether the detection uh, deadlock has occurred or not so this is how this deadlock detection and prevention can be done and next we will try to see some more things about recovery if at all possible okay so thank you